Oh yes. Yeah. But not really. Yeah. Your daily right. Hour with right. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's Hi. The, it's the program. Hi. We're on TV. Hi. Once again, every day we turn on the machines and we talk for an hour. I'm speaking really in a low volume because I don't want to hear this. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, to yes, balance out my fake. Uh, uh, yeah. Kind of hey everybody! Oh, we're here on the program. We are oh, here sweet. on the program to say hello stuff. Hello. Hello for an hour. Hello. Yeah, that mic does not work. It's, we have, that one needs the karaoke machine bypass because the volume is low on it for some reason. Oh, I see. Well, yeah. it's I think the fourth day here in the brand new studio. We got, um, it's Dan's first time here in the studio, Monday Dan, so this is kind of an event. We've got, I think we're hitting the stride, haven't even been here a week, and it already feels like home to me, I feel like. Yeah. Well, we've got art up on the walls now, That that's really awesome, and uh, we've got a fan already. Things in the room. It's good to have a fan for the program. But we have ourselves, really, that's the, the important thing. We're here and we're back on the couch again. It, it, yeah. it maybe it doesn't even seem like that much of a difference to the viewers. And we keep moving around, but we're mostly kind of the same thing. But there, uh, this is the big difference. So we can look out and we can see onto the streets. Oh. Say, what did you see on the streets? Looks like I see a uh, cigarette butt out there. I saw parking almost. space. Oh, there's some cars out there. We're waiting for oh, fire oh, hydrant. There's fire our fire hydrant. hydrant. We're gonna wait for that thing to be used someday. Maybe. Oh, what's that? Is that an animal? Oh no, it's just a shadow. <laughs> a leaf. It's a leaf. Oh, it's a zoomed in oh, leaf. That's I thought a it was a huge leaf. I was like, oh, it's our first wild animal. <laughs> but it was just a leaf. I was excited. Yeah, it could have been a dark creature. How are you doing today, Dan? Uh, Screening I'm around in the well. night. Uh, uh, I'm doing well. How was the week for you? You were the week I mean, I was say, when was the last time you were here? I do believe I was here 24 hours times 7. Which is uh, uh, 20 times 7 is 140. You were here Monday, last Monday. Yeah, last Monday. Let's call it that. Yeah. And now you're back again. How so? What you, how was the week? What did you do on the week? Uh, I hung out a lot with my girlfriend. Uh huh. Which uh, you know, it's weird. I've had lots of friends. I've hung out with friends. Okay. I've been married, so I've been a husband, so hanging out with my wife or doing wife stuff or stuff with my wife, uh, that I know about. Yeah. Uh, I had a partner for about 12 years, and so I got used to that. I know what that's like, but having a girlfriend is different. You got to try, so. I mean, not like you don't have to try in the marriage, but I mean, it's Well, like not a try, it's that we don't live in the same place, and we're not together all the time, and oh, yeah. when we both can make our schedules work, we're together and hang out, and it's really nice, and uh, so, you know, I'm still, I still have my own space and time to do things that I need to do, and meanwhile, uh, she's doing the same thing, and when we can, we get together, and do nice bugs in here. Things to each other. Um, I think that we're just gonna deal. Bugs are gonna be attracted to the lights. We're gonna have oh, to deal true. with the bugs. Yeah, that'll work. Well, good for you, Dan. Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. Oh, there's a bus. Yeah. People. <laughs> it's like John Wester. It's yeah, I'm looking for a girlfriend. <laughs> uh, I was single for six years. Uh huh. And I got used to that. So having girlfriends. Girlfriend Dan. Change. Yeah. Good for you. She's nice. She treats me well. Did she watch the program? You tell her about the program? Oh yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah. Did you watch it? I don't know. We didn't watch it when we haven't watched it when she's been over. We've been watching other stuff and doing other things, but uh, uh, no, I don't know if she's seen it. Tell her to watch it. Yeah. You know, I was I She'll be. We should want to watch the Monday episodes, maybe. I showed her the uh, videos from the Fabulous Downey Brothers, and she absolutely fell in love with oh them. Good. She she liked every single one she saw. Good videos. Um, yeah. Hey, 
a cop. When, ooh, the police. When, when, when I don't know what I was doing your, uh, your, your, what's it called, mental health show. I didn't actually yeah. get on. I, when I was hanging out there, I was telling some kid about this show. And he's, he asked me, first thing he asked me, he said, are you in a relationship? I don't know why he asked me that, but he did. And I was like, well, Whoa. I was a long time on the program, uh, I guess. It's hard. But, uh, so he was about, yeah, I'm having yeah, lots I'm of relationships. No, I'm did having he, a relationship have, with you. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> did he have really hmm. long hair? He did, long yeah. red hair? Yeah. You know that kid? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a Facebook friend now. He, well, I mean, he, he exactly when I did. He, he, he knew somehow that I knew that who I was talking about. Like, how did you know who it was? Because there's a lot of kids there. could have been any of them. Um, I just guessed because there were two young people there, and he was the only other one. And so it was an easy guess. Yeah. And he, I've gotten to know him somewhat well enough that it seems like the thing that he would ask for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> he asked that. I don't know why I think that, but it just it makes sense. How about the streets? Danny sees anything on the streets? You know, a lot of dry brown grass. A lot of grass. It's still, it's still dry. You, you know, know, it rained a little bit today, I think. It did rain? I know I it did a couple of days ago. We were ago. talking about droughts because you brought up the grass again. And, yeah. now, and we, you know, we went into the drought and how I don't feel like we're in a drought because it's I plenty of water. Uh, and then it rained, I think, not too long after. He said we were in a drought. Yeah, well, I haven't seen any shoes or gum or Band-Aids or... Uh, Bugs or anything. I've been the animals. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen anything, you know, that I could commit to memory that was unusual or interesting or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, a lot of pennies. Uh, I think I have picked up a dozen pennies in the street. Just shiny new pennies just laying there on the street. It was like mine. Yeah. yeah. I knew people that just threw them. Yeah. When they got them, yeah. They, they discontinued pennies in... What, in Canada, Canada, right? Yeah, they stopped making pennies. So what happens to, to people who had a lot of pennies? Well, um, they could sell them for the copper. Is it worth they're more? still they're still valuable. They're still currency, right? They still accepted. They're just not making new ones. In Canada, I don't think they're accepting them now. What? I think they're being all circulated back to the mint unless people keep them. No. Yeah, because uh, you buy a thing for. Uh, whatever, and you, you know, you you buy something for a dollar fifty-two. If it's a dollar fifty-two, the price is rounded down to a dollar fifty. If you buy something for a dollar fifty-three, it's rounded up to a dollar fifty-five. Uh-huh. They just round up or round down to yeah. the nearest nickel. And that really adds up, though. But uh, I guess it hopefully it averages out to you. It will. I bet. It, I bet there's some kind of like. Thing where it m- mostly rounds up, it seems like it would round yeah. up more often than round down for some. Well, reason. that three is the middle number. I mean, if you're rounding down at three, then it, if it were 54, you'd round up, and 55, you'd be right there. Yeah. So that was that three that rounds up instead of down. It seems like they're just going to stop doing any kind of middle numbers at all pretty soon. But because like, why would they have to round up if they're just like are pricing their stuff? Wouldn't they just like well, price it to? The five Canada because they have has a federal sales tax, and yeah. that's a percentage, and so that may affect the price afterwards. You know, so it's not, oh, I see. You know, they'll charge. I just never understood why people didn't just tax, take the tax and like or or they are. They know what the tax is going to be. Why don't they just like? Yeah, yeah exactly. Put it in there so it's round. Yeah. yeah. Why have they? D- I mean, that seems like the easiest thing to do. Yeah, I, I don't know why they don't. I think in Washington it might be because of standardization. And they, w- they don't want to, like, they just, like, grocery stores and, like, you know, like, McDonald's and chains and everything, they have their prices that are set ready, and they don't want to change it because they're not getting any money or less money, so they would have to price, like, accordingly, and they just don't want to do that, so they get more money that way. Oh, well, if I were a business, I would include the tax with the price, and it would be all calculated. Yeah, and I think that would be her, because the, the, pri- the tax is so high. Yeah, yeah they, they usually do that. But uh, well, but there's three different taxes that are applied to liquor. Yeah, but you know how you know how like lots of stuff is like ninety nine, like whatever five ninety nine. Yeah, five ninety nine, so, like, five ninety eight, five ninety seven. They don't do that anymore in Canada, I guess. Well, I don't know. Uh, when I go up there next month uh, and visit, I'm going to be paying attention to the prices of things and and seeing how it works. And I'll be buying stuff, so I'll get first hand experience at how things are rounded up or rounded down. So. 
Yeah, but it still doesn't make sense to me to not accept the old pennies. It's like maybe they sh could have a government return program, but it, why would they not be a valuable currency just because they're not being made anymore? Seems well, like they're just that's just like suddenly money that you thought you had is now just worthless. That seems like it would make people afraid of the economic system in general. I imagine you could give them five pennies. Yeah. I imagine. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I would like to be able to answer that question, but I don't know. But or will, at I least. I tell you at the end of August when I get back. Well, not, or, at least a, or at least a Canadian uh, Federal Reserve or whatever. Yeah. If, if not like a, a bank itself or, or uh, the uh, uh, shop that you're buying like a, a six pack of whatever. My, uh, my grandmother gave me her penny savings, which turned out to be maybe like $60. Wow. Man, that's a lot of pennies. But I was a little kid, and she just gave me this uh, thing. I don't know. You may, maybe you've seen it in the background. It's a genie thing. Oh, yeah. A genie thing. She gave me that when I was little. About this big. It's probably you know, like 50 bucks or something in there, but it's like, you know, is that 50, is that 5,000 pennies? $50? Right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, five thousand pennies. So she gave me like you know about what it, what what, <coughs> what would are, be five thousand pennies. What about those people, the 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 penny hoarders like my grandmother and uh uh well now they have a collection of something that's no longer currency and so now they're collectors items and uh but it costs like four cents to make to physically make a penny. Oh yeah. That's what I've heard. It's four cents. So a penny is a thin copper alloy uh, surface, and inside of that is zinc. That's so why they're not melt it down and, and you'd have more money than the pennies anyway. Oh yeah, if you melted down the copper, oh yeah. So so maybe that they can just start doing that. But that's, yeah. is that I mean that's illegal in itself to destroy currency, isn't it? But maybe not pennies because they're not currency anymore. Mm, yeah. What an interesting loophole. Well, there's some there's some trick that you can do. You take a you take a real thin, like a hacksaw, and you cut, you slice uh, part way into the side of the penny. What, width-wise? You know, a real sharp little saw. Really and small, you, like you, smaller than a side of a coin size well, saw. Well, think of a think of a uh, like a like an exacto knife, but with some serrated edges, like a little mini micro, tiny tiny little saw. And you cut into the penny, and then like you stick the penny in an. Saw. Well, you stick it coin in an saw. acid, and the acid. Acid. Yeah, hold on, let me finish. <laughs> coin uh, saw. And the acid breaks down the zinc in the inside of the penny, and the zinc comes out, and so you have this empty shell. And then oh. you go up to someone, and you say, uh, "Do you? I'll bet you I can rip this penny in half," and they would say, "No way." And then you rip it in half because it's super, super thin. You rip the penny in half, and they're like, "Oh my God, that's amazing! You must be Superman or something." It's a, it's, it's a part of trick. What? You, you remove the zinc inside the penny by way of an acid, and uh, or it might possibly be an alkali, but I'm pretty sure it's an acid. That's the magic trick. Sorry, yeah, trick, the trick, 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 yeah. trick. Yeah. So you can do that. Yeah, but when I get to Canada, I will have all kinds of questions because my sister talked about it. So I was like, "Oh yeah, months ago they they stopped making pennies, and so now everybody rounds up or rounds down, whatever the price is. You round up, round down. They don't take pennies. We don't use pennies anymore. They don't take them. I just don't like that. Well, that's what she said. But uh, you know, there may be some old school people like. No, well, Dan, must use pennies. What you need to do is you need to go when you go to Canada and bring back some pennies. I want to see those. All right. Those, like, banned pennies, pennies. I might pennies. have a couple. I every once in a while I'll, I'll get Canadian money. I'll see a Canadian dime or a Canadian nickel or a Canadian penny, and I have a little maybe a little jar, a little thing that I've been putting. Maybe Canadian that'll money. be worth something someday. The like lost currencies. Is that something people like? It's like a two dollar bill. Yeah. Are people forget they're real too. Yeah, pe people, what's what's money? But you know, if people accept it, then they do, and if they don't, then they don't. And really, what that's what currency really is. You're giving these people these things, and you say, "This is what I'm giving you," and I want things. I want a hamburger. Here are these pieces of metal. Like accept them or not. Like 
You know, so somebody like, I'm not accepting these, and they're like, this is why, these are quarters. You know, I don't take quarters. I don't, be I don't believe in them. <laughs> you know, I mean, what are you going to do at that point? So I've never heard of a dime before. Why would we need dimes if we have nickels, pennies, and quarters? Yeah. That's crazy. I don't agree with dimes. Yeah, I shun them. You just decide what you want and what you don't want. You hang up a sign in your phone. store, no dimes allowed. Yeah. What do you want to mm -hmm. do when you, when you think? You run up to a dollar. Why not no shirt, dollar? no shoes, no dimes, no service. Yeah. Or it, with dimes. For anyone here, some messages. Uh, what, what, what's your schedule like? Where are you going? You're going to be getting oh, a I'm going to leave. All right. So I want to hear a message. How are, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm excited about the new studio, having a good time, uh, enjoying the time that I've spent doing the production end here. The, that's my production end update is that, uh, actually maybe I'll show you, I'll show the viewers. Where we have the production end here, say how's the production end, I was going to say. How's the production end? It's, the it's here. Here's the couch, and everyone's there on the couch, and then across the, s the, r the room, across the studio, Boom, there's that computer. There's the production end. That's what we use to uh, record the program, and we're actually recording it live right now, straight onto the computer. Who knows if we'll use that actual update. We're testing it. We're doing some tests. Doing some tests, but needless to say, we're catching up right here in the studio in the, in the, in the very room, and I'm surprised we haven't done this before because it makes a lot of sense. Here's a message, it's the only message we got today. George, you Sorry, know you're back, all right? That's what the Google this, voice this says. It seems to. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, working. Mike, you need to stay in. You can turn it back. Bye. You know, Mike's on uh, speakers. That's true. So maybe it's getting some reverse signal. Well, that's good. Uh, that's a call from Dan. Maybe we'll call him back. Um, was, we've heard some from some new callers. Like, did you ever hear from Matthew's dad? No. I only wanted him to call in. I, I, I listened. I watched that episode the other day when Matt, like the last episode in the old studio. Oh. Well, I'm trying to control I'm the future. Go. Do you hey, want to pick I'm a number first? The, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Did you do it again then? I, I did it yesterday. You know, the, there's a level right here and... Oh, that's awesome. VCR, oh, in the VCR, yeah. You gotta go to channel yeah. two on there? Yeah. Right? Right. Sure. That one's channel two. Right. When you press play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. Carl's doing it now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's getting you ready to take over, Carl. Yeah, Carl, you're, you're the apprentice. Now press stop, you gotta press stop, you press stop now. Go back. Hey, back I, yeah. There we go. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Who's going to roll the dice? Who's going to roll the dice? Uh, okay, I'll do it. Sweetness. Just don't let them roll outside. <laughs> Six. I lost. I lost as well. Deep, deep sadness. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Sweet. Did you win? You got a six. You won. The mailbox belonging to Dan Dobler. And cannot accept new messages at this time. To leave callback number, press five. Or please try again later. I don't know. I have a 
Goodbye. Also. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Um, yes, please. Oh, oh, oh. Um, sure. We're going to get new keys, all right? Yeah. When you do the studio tomorrow, we can do it. I think we're going to be coming here at, at night tomorrow, tomorrow around, around, uh, what? Nine, uh, probably uh, 10.30. Do the doors lock behind us? Okay, that one too? Okay. We're going to be here at 10.30. Let's get that camera back on the street. Bye. Right there. Let's see Freddy out. Where's the camera? There you go. Oh, Freddy. The light. Bye bye You have to kind of stand in front of the light. Uh, you can't see, see it. Oh, that's better. There it goes. You're, you're well lit. Bye. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some of them. The ones that were in good shape. Some were just, you know, they had. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know where that buzzing sound is coming from. think so. But this mic works. Whatever, I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. Uh, that's all the phone stuff that we have for today, so now we're going to use our wits and stuff. So. Turn the yeah, fan. Yeah, it's yeah, hot. We need the fan. Um, in fact, why don't we me? Whoa! Uh, so you didn't lose the camera. Dan, what did you did you did you have stuff to? Oh yes, I have. Say today. I have lots of stuff. Uh huh. What 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 what's the science, Dan? Oh, that's no good. You want your fan so close to you? Oh no, I guess it's fine. I think it's good. Yeah, it's blowing that way, that's the funny oh, part. Yeah. Flips around. But it's drawing in air, so. There we go. Great. Yeah, that's nice. Alright. Is it is it really? <laughs> you don't like it? I like it right in my face. If you don't like it right there in your you face. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have all the fan you want. There we go. I'm gonna just keep it right here, all, all on me. Is it dry you out or what? Yeah, my my eyes get dry, my mouth gets dry, so. I like the fan right it's on okay. me. Okay, I might get used to it. So. so, what are we doing here? Okay, so, so exciting news in the land of Pluto. Uh, I read this super huge long article about the science that they're doing, about how the. The probe is uh, going to take all the shots and uh, get tons of pictures and, and how it's all going to go down. And I was reasonably familiar with what was going to happen, but this article was overwhelmingly detailed. Uh huh. So uh, the probe, as of this moment right now, in today, uh, it will have happened a week ago when you watch this, <coughs> but. Uh, it is pre-programmed to take uh, an enormous number of shots as it approaches and as it takes pictures. And so what it's going to do, it's going to take all kinds of pictures of Pluto and then all kinds of pictures of Sharon and the uh, uh, four other little moons and then more pictures of Pluto 
and then after it passes Pluto, then it will take backlit shots. Like the sun will be, it will be, the sun will be in the direction that it takes pictures, and so it will be able to see the diffuse atmosphere of Pluto as the sun shines through the atmosphere. And uh -huh. yeah, it's going to take tons and tons of different shots as it goes through. Shots of the moon, shots of uh, the planet, shots of uh, all kinds of stuff, and it'll just take pictures as it recedes. And then in two years, there is another object that it will fly by that is in its path. Uh, the Hubble telescope spent about six months. NASA used the Hubble telescopes for about six months to try and find objects that were in the same direction as Pluto as the probe was going, uh, but a little bit further so that they could give this probe something else to do after it flew by Pluto, because it's a one-shot deal. And there are two different objects that uh, it conceivably could visit. One is fairly close, and it's right in the pathway. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's almost in line. And then there's another one that's a little bigger and farther out that's about three or four years out. Uh, I'm going to try and have the probe visit both of them. But it's, uh, the probe is traveling faster than anything. So, so it's going to go by, it's going to go click, 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 click. And the probe is not going to send any data to the Earth while it's taking pictures because the processor is all busy taking pictures from two different collectors, two different telescopes. Uh, and four other instruments that will be collecting data like crazy. So it's got a bunch of hard drives, it's got two different computers, and it's going to be very, very busy. And then once it gets out of range of Pluto, then it will start sending data. So we're not going to see any pictures from Pluto whatsoever tomorrow except a few in the morning that it'll send right before it starts taking this automated set of shots of the planet in its moon. Wow. My dad yeah. tells me that it t will take uh, like 18 months for all of the data to yeah. uh, reach planet Earth. Yeah, well, uh, it's just going to be going two cameras. Click, 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 click. And all the instruments are going, you know, like a tricorder. Yeah. Robot noises. Yep. It's got that high-pitched whistle, right? The tricorder. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be all of the processor power is going to be used gathering data, and then about a day after it's done, about nine or ten hours after it's passed by the planet, then uh, it's going to start sending pictures. So we're not going to get any pictures tomorrow, except any pictures it's taken as of now. Because right now, it's like 11 o'clock or something, I think. It's somewhere around 11. And then, uh, there we go. And then, uh, 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 once it gets close, it'll just, it won't be sending anything more. So there might be one or two more pictures. I haven't, I've been busy at work all day. I haven't been able to, to look at the, at the different websites that show pictures, but, uh, the the pictures are going to be spectacular. Uh, at the closest approach to Pluto, it's going to be 7,000 miles away from it, so it's going to get some great shots. It'll be 17,000 miles away from Charon, the moon, the big moon, and 20 and 30,000 miles from the various moons, wherever they are. There's there's a bunch. They're all over the place. Um, so uh, we'll get a few shots in the morning, and then nothing. Uh, for about 10 hours and then it'll start uh, sending pictures back. So tomorrow night when I get home from work, uh, it'll be Pluto all night like crazy. I'm going uh, to be pretty excited. So, wow. So. Why is uh, Sharon Sarandon um, um, up in space? Are you well, excited? Yeah. Sharon Sarandon. Uh, Susan Sarandon? Oh, uh, Susan. Yeah, Sharon. <laughs> Sorry. Sharon Osborne. Sharon. Yeah, you got me on that one. <laughs> Sharon Osborne, Sharon I Needles. Yeah, myself. Sharon o yeah, Sharon Osborne. <laughs> because Sharon Stone. Oz Ozzy, 
Yeah, Sharon Stone. Stone Carl's Wall. reaching. Oh, man. Carl, Sharon you're reaching Stone. so hard, you're not even getting the celebrity names right. I mean, yeah. Susan Sarandon. That is one. I mean, are you thinking it? It's okay. I, 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 who is it? Who, what I, is it? I, I, I was thinking of Sigourney Weaver, Weaver, too. I'm not sure who Susan Sarandon even is. Susan I know Sarandon. I recognize the name, but. She, did you ever crossed. see Thelma and Louise? Yeah. She was either Thelma or Louise. Wasn't sure. that? That was, I think. Susan Sarandon, yeah. Are you, wasn't that? Sh oh, Susan Sarandon. No, but what about? She was who one was, of the women. Well, who's an alien? Uh, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver is not, not Thelma and Louise? No. Nope. Su Susan Sarandon? I think maybe just, you think Susan Sarandon and Sigourney Weaver kind of look the same? Uh, look at what I did. I think maybe I have them. Just uh, look at Susan what you did, Sarandon bro. is older than Sigourney Weaver, and she has red hair. And she's look married what to did, what's his face? Bro. Susan Sarandon. Is we're talking about celebrities. Do you know Susan Sarandon and Sigourney Weaver, though, Carl? Do you know who they are? Uh, Can you picture them? I I've never. Seen I'm not sure. I think I think now. maybe. Well, but you've seen them in movies, though. I know you don't met them. You know, that's not how you get know you know celebrities. You. Know them from their from their TV shows well, and yeah, things. actually, uh, to get to know someone. I would need to meet them. No, do you know them? You know what I mean. You don't don't. You're trying to like just dis, like. Well, why don't you communicate, Carl? Why are you trying to like break communication on purpose? We're trying to we're trying to communicate with you, and you're just doing this thing where you're purposely no. not communicating. Uh, yes, I see them on TV. Yeah, and you, and you know what they look like? Uh, I. Because they look the same to me in my mind. I think they're the same person. Maybe I like don't know what one of them looks like, so I'm like replacing the other one with the other one in my mind. Well, I had a celebrity crush on Susan Sarandon, but not so much on Sigourney Weaver. So you can tell the difference then, because I, I don't really have too much of a connection between either of them. Sigourney Weaver was in the first two Ghostbuster movies. Yeah. Susan Sarandon was in Thelma and Louise. Uh, but they both have red hair, don't they? Sigourney Weaver, no. Her hair is dark brunette. Dark brunette? Yeah. Dark brunette. And she was in Aliens. She was in all the Alien movies. I, I thought she has very dark hair. Sarandon, red hair. Hmm. Light skin, uh, freckles. All right. Well, hey, let's let's look at this thing. You want to do that thing, Carl? You know? Uh, you know yeah. Yep. Yeah, do that too. Now it's info time. Watching your daily hour with me, it's our long hyper life television talk show that's over every day in Percy County, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 366 days on the cruise, 1HW, every day, September 19, 2010. Tape is a week in advance. Yeah, it's uh, the, the tape is a week in advance. So if you're watching this on TCTV Channel 22, 11 30 p.m., this episode taped on the same weekday of the previous week. If you're watching this at 2 a.m., this episode taped on the same day of the month of the previous year. You can also watch any episode of the program on YouTube.com. Anyone can come on the program, especially you. We rely on the community for content, so give us a call at 360-836-4384. Leave a message. We'll play your message on the next episode and call you back. Thank you. Yeah, I touched that button as soon stop, as stop, I was... Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, I got uh, it. <laughs> I got it. I touched the button on my uh, uh, microphone when I picked quick. it up. Yeah, and, and you, but my microphone was, yeah, I know. My microphone was like, oh, good, it's on, because sometimes I have my microphone off. You want to, you, should we try to Especially rearrange? Especially when you call McDonald's, because I don't want to uh, have them catch that I'm laughing. You think we should rearrange the, the, the thing? I, me, what? What thing? That you should we rearrange it so that the or do you are you do you like doing the VCR over there, Carl? Is that okay? Or you oh, want, that's fine. Because that's all you over there. I mean, I'm just gonna sit over here and you. Okay. You, you're doing that stuff, I guess. Uh, uh you know, let's you know, go. Out the Yay. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, what? What did you? Litter. I was gonna eat it. Litter, Pizza, please. Do you think pigeons will eat peanuts? Sure. I was gonna say it's for pigeons, but I don't know if they're. Crows. Eating. Yeah, crows. You think, crows like nuts, right? I'm sure yeah, they do. Because there's nuts. Yeah. There's nuts in in like birds here. There's I guess, but they're smaller. Seeds mostly. Yeah. Well, there's a the thing called seed, bird some, seed. Some flower seeds and peanuts are very similar to me, but they're not actually. Maybe I, I mean, they're kind of the same. I mean, like they're they're like no, in a pod. You crack it open and you eat the insides, right? I mean, yeah. is, it, is a peanut a seed? 
Yes. It, yeah, okay. So it's maybe it's similar. It's like peanut seed. Well, it grows. It's a little shrub, and it's got these little tendrils, and there's peanuts on the end, like they're like they're, and they grow just just barely below the surface. Oh, the a sunflower is is on the end of a flower. It's in the the center of a of a big flower. So I thought that their peanuts are uh, above the ground. They might be. Uh, I was watching a show once, and. And it was this little bush, and the guy moved the leaves, and there were these little strings and peanuts on the end of it. Oh. Mm. So, All right. so, yeah, I was, I'm not sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to make of that. Um, so, what about anything else about the Pluto? Pluto um, it looks like there is some sort of active geology on Pluto. Uh, they have seen one crater or what looks like a crater and you know you look at the moon right and there's all kinds of craters uh -huh. and there's areas in the moon where there isn't much in the way of craters but anytime you have a body I mean all of the moons and planets have been around for four and a half billion years and that's been plenty of time for craters and when you find a little world whether it's a moon or a planet and there isn't much in the way of craters you know that the surface it has been ge geologically active because that the erosion or, or sedimentation or uh, uh, water flow or uh, plate tectonics or any number you know any number of weathering of some kind or something there's a whole bunch of different things that surface will erase surface friction yeah yeah there are all kinds of things that will erase the evidence of craters and the fewer craters there are, the younger the surface is. And it looks like there might be one thing on the planet, but it could very easily be a cryovolcano. What's a cryovolcano? A cryovolcano is where ice, water ice, is frozen solid and it acts like rock. It behaves like rock. Uh huh. Uh, because it's so very cold, the ice is super, super dense and super, super hard like rock. And if under the surface of the body, let's say it's Europa, the icy crust acts like rock, and then <coughs> it's warmer on the inside due to, due to gravitational interactions with the other moons and with Jupiter, uh, we've got an ocean under the icy crust of Europa, and uh, there might be a hot spot or there might be a little extra pressure, a little crack, forms in the icy surface and water spews out just like lava would spew out of a volcano and so it's called a cryovolcano because it's not actually hot the temperature of the water coming out is actually room temperature yeah it's not boiling hot but everything warm. else is so cold it's like really hot in comparison yeah <clears throat> and so what happens is the water flows to the surface and and freezes very, very quickly, just like lava would freeze uh, uh -huh. on the surface. And you get the same kind of structures that build up in a cryovolcano as with a regular volcano. Instead of rock, it's ice. And you get this, these, this large cone-shaped mountain top that uh, uh, lava, or water in this case, has flowed out and then frozen and, and uh, become solid once yeah. again. It might as well be uh, a rock. Titan appears to have cryovolcanoes. The air pressure on Titan is one and a half times the Earth's. It's a little bit thicker air pressure. And so uh, that affects the way different gases behave. For instance, the air pressure on the Earth is not strong enough to keep carbon dioxide from going from a solid to straight to a gas. Okay. If the air pressure were uh, double or triple what it is on the Earth's surface, carbon dioxide, when you freeze it, it would go into a solid, and then it would melt into a liquid, and then it would evaporate into a gas. But the air pressure isn't strong enough, so it goes, it sublimes. It goes straight from one matter state, and it doesn't do a transitional state to another state. You know, solid, liquid, gas. Mm Just goes solid to gas. So, so uh, things behave a little bit different uh, on the surface of Titan with this really super thick atmosphere. The temperature on Titan is just right for methane and ethane and a few other related molecules 
to be in a liquid state because the air pressure is so much stronger than it is here. And it's cold. It's like minus, uh, minus 180, minus 200 something. Wow. Degrees. It's super cold. But it's just the right temperature that ethane and methane can form into a liquid. And there's tons and tons of little lakes and rivers and oceans on the North Pole uh, for part of the year on Titan, and then on the South Pole for part of the year on Titan, depending on the orientation, because uh, Saturn tilts back and forth like the Earth does. It has, a, it has a seasonal tilt, and all the planets have a seasonal tilt along with it. And when the planet tilts, then the north side faces the sun a little bit more. It gets a little bit warmer. Uh, and so all the lakes and rivers and stuff evaporate because it's warm. Uh, but the South Pole uh, sees less sun exposure. And so that's where uh, these liquids form. And they form lakes and rivers and stuff like that. So it rains liquid methane on Ooh. Titan. <coughs> Stinky. There's the atmosphere is absolutely filled thick with this uh, par particulate called, deadly. called bullet. Oh yeah, they're Don't dead. breathe that. Yeah, so ultraviolet light hits a methane molecule and it knocks off one of the hydrogens and then an ammonia molecule attaches to it and you get uh, cyanide, I think. That cyanide. And then another ultraviolet light hits it and knocks off a a uh, hydrogen atom and it forms uh, 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 forms uh, uh, a methane molecule attaches to it and you get these oddly shaped hydrocarbons that are hydrogen, carbon, uh, maybe some nitrogen, maybe an extra oxygen uh, uh, <coughs> and uh, a few other little trace other molecules and so uh, these molecules will clump together and they'll make these little tiny particles and they're very very red and orange and that's why titan is orange is because the, in, the entire atmosphere <coughs> is filled with these hydro hydrocarbon molecules of various sizes and various mixtures and various various kinds of uh chemical properties and uh and then it's the that becomes a seed for a raindrop and the raindrop is methane and so it rains this stuff onto Titan constantly. Wow. So when are we going to invade Titan and, and liberate the heck out of them? Well, we already liberated. Well, no, we didn't liberate. We already landed a probe on Titan. Right. The Europeans did, actually. And the name of that probe was Huygens. So are they collecting the, the gases there in, and like, uh, Lewis? burning? Huygens. <laughs> I know, I like saying that. It sounds funny. Like Jerry Lewis. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. Like, uh, what, does Jerry what, does Jerry what else does Jerry Lewis say? This is like... Uh, Yay! Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, Aye. my... Aye. Aye. He's like the, nutty the original Nutty Professor. I guess, yeah. The, like, uh... Yeah, I, know, I like the, the Nutty Professor. The original is... Yeah, awesome. the original is Jerry Lewis. Oh! Good. Yeah. Hooligans! Yeah, because he talked like this. Oh, Hooligans! Yeah. Uh, yep. What's a, what is Huygens? What does that even mean? It's okay, it, it, Huygens was an astronomer that I believe discovered Titan. Okay. I believe. Oh, or, wow. Or he discovered uh, that the rings of Saturn were actual rings. Yeah. Because when Galileo first saw Saturn, he thought that they were like lobes, like earlobes. He didn't know what they were because they were there part of the time. And Earlobes. over the years, uh, as Saturn would tilt, when the rings are edge on, you can't see them. So the, the planet would tilt and they were really apparent. And then as uh, Saturn went through its seasons, the rings would disappear and then they would reappear. And he had no idea what they were. He was just kind of guessing. And so Huygens uh, was an astronomer that lived 50 or 60 years afterwards or 20 or 30 years afterwards. He might have been uh, Galileo's contemporary. I'm not really sure. I haven't uh, read. I don't remember the details. I, I think I read it at one point, but I don't remember. Mentor. Yeah, so so he discovered something important about Saturn. I don't remember what. It may have been Titan. I'm not really sure. Uh, but they named the, this little lander probe with a parachute that descended 
into the atmosphere. And it was it was pretty amazing. The atmosphere of Titan was pretty much what they expected, uh, which says a lot for uh, theorists, right? Because they say, oh, we think it's going to be like this, and we think it's going to be like that because we've studied this property and that property, and we know uh, this about chemistry, and we know that about physics, and we know this about geology, and so we predict that it's going to be like this and this and this and this, and it was pretty close to what they predicted. And when that happens, you know that the science is pretty solid because they're making educated guesses. And when their educated no guesses are really close to reality, that means they're doing well. They know what they're doing. They, they, uh, they're, 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 they're good at what they're doing. So, yeah. Good. So, my dad has talked, to, or I asked a question about how cold it would be like in outer space, like yeah. far outside of uh, the um, uh, atmosphere of planet Earth. And my dad said that it would be a couple of degrees above absolute zero. Yeah, Pluto, yeah. Uh, I think so, it's 20 or 30 degrees above. Yeah, so w would it be like uh, uh, th that same temperature, just like right on the directly on the surface of some of these planets like uh, Pluto or Titan or whatever well uh, because there's no air yeah uh, heat isn't evenly distributed and if you're an astronaut and you're at the at the space station and you're floating around preparing some widget on the exterior of the space station the side facing the Sun will get up to close to 200 degrees right the side facing away from the sun will get down to minus 200 degrees. Right. So when they build spaceships and space stations and satellites, they have to have materials that don't expand and contract under severe cold or severe heat. And, and then they break orbit, off. Yeah, and as they orbit around the planet, different sides face the sun at different times. And so you get this in, intense heat for a little while and then intense cold for a while and intense heat for a while and intense cold for a while and so you have to you have to have materials with really heat uh, heat distributive properties where where it, it shakes the heat off or it, it, it sends the heat out or it blocks the heat or something like that and so the farther away from the sun you get the less hot on the sun side that it gets and the colder on the uh, sun less side uh, it gets. N knowing how cold it is in outer space though, how come a metal isn't going to be like colder than 200 degrees below zero? Well, you've got you know, you've got the space station and you're floating out there in front of it you've got heat being uh, you've got this radiant heat from the sun hitting the side of the space station and it's reflecting that heat off of it. Uh huh. So you're going to be getting a little reflective heat, you know, infrared heat off of other objects around you that warm wherever you are at up. The moon will reflect heat. The earth, you're floating above the earth. There's all kinds of heat being radiated away from the Earth. All kinds. Uh, and you're right, right in the sun, there's not an atmosphere, so there's probably lots of heat. Yeah, but it's not like hot air. It's just radiant heat, like from a microwave. Mm -hmm. If you've ever stood in front of a bonfire, and you have to stand back because it's super hot, and if you stick your hand in front of your face, you are literally shading yourself from this infrared radiant heat. It's not the warm air. It's the infrared light coming off of the fire and you I'm sure you guys have done this you've held your hand up in front of your face of the fire because your face is really hot and you notice it makes a shade yeah. a heat shade so to speak so and that's what happens in the vicinity of the earth we've got the earth and the moon and other objects if you're an astronaut uh, reflecting all kinds of heat so it's going to warm up objects in the vicinity. All right. Does that make sense? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. All right. Let's play, let's play the dice game, yeah? I need a three. Here we go. I must have a three. Or all two be, dice. Or I'll be all upset. Sort of. Not really. Mildly upset. Or Mi fake mildly fake upset. Fake upset. Mildly fake upset. I, Lots actually, of qualifiers. I will attempt to be fake, fake, really upset, but fake. All right. Dan, Dan's, oh, Dan's fictional me. emotions rest yes. on the on these dice. <laughs> fictional emotions. Here we go. I need a three. Nope. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you got it. You got one. Two threes. Oh, two? Oh, wow. Two threes. You're, Holy I, crap. But you'll be real happy about fake sad. Is that what's going to happen? Well, if I was going to be fake sad, I should be fake happy. But actually, I'm really happy. Yeah. I'm actually non-fictionally happy. Good. <laughs> uh, did not that dice quite yet. Not so yet, but you we'll have to but wait two. Wait you, for the program. You still got two. Yeah. That's He's amazing. got two. That's amazing. He's pretty I good. got two threes. So, Carl, do you know how to run the commercial tape now, too? You want to get that going? You, you got, sure. You? Yeah. That's fine. That's one from last year. All right. We're going to be... Uh, I don't know we're going to move into the uh, into the attic studio in the commercials. I'm waiting for it to happen. Yeah, that'll be cool. Where is it? One year ago today. Wow. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey, big program commercial. We're really hot. Um, the yeah. dogs are hot. The dogs are kind of combative. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the um, dice game. Uh, no, that's the subject of today's episode. Tune in for that at 11.30 p.m. tonight and 2 a.m. Um, uh, in the morning for last year's I don't know what... Yeah. Yeah. You, you were, um, uh, like, spinning your... <laughs> Um, finger around, just like you know. Uh, I guess you were trying to say, Carl, point, point, Carl. What, is that what I was maybe, saying? I think I, I was just know. going like. I, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> this is too hot. It, so it seemed like it was hot. I'm glad it's cooled down a bit. I'm trying to remember. I think it was right before uh, we all moved out of the garage mm -hmm. that I think you came to the program and you were slightly intoxicated. Oh, yeah, we'll have to wait for them. Uh, I think that was at so night, has though. has that happened? Um, has that happened yet? It hasn't happened yet. We might have missed it. We went, like, a week or two without commercials from last year. Yeah. So we might have missed it. Well, I remember it was a summer, and I remember it being warm, and it was the most random thing because uh, it's not something I'm... I'm I ever expect you to do ever? Yeah, well, yeah, it you happens. You did the total unexpected. I was drunk. Um, it happens. I think I don't know. We're downtown. We're next to the bars, so maybe it could happen often. But I don't think it so. Could. Not really. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. But it could. We're we're right next to the bar strip, pretty much. So we're yeah. gonna look out. Yeah, the Carl's so drunk right now. Away. Carl, how drunk are you right now? Uh, so drunk. Who? So drunk. Are you so yeah. so so drunk? Uh, drunk with uh, power. <laughs> I got all this technology to play with. <laughs> really drunk with power. No. 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 I'm not Bush. I'm not Bush. You wish you were drunk with power? I'm not Bush. No. No, it's, it's okay. You don't like Bush, Carl? Uh, what do you ever do to you? I, oh, That's so over oh, with. Yeah. Get over it. Get oh, over snap. it. That was a long time ago. Oh, you didn't do anything snap. about it. That was, Snap. Long, that was so long ago, you didn't wow. do anything about it, and he came and went, wow. and, you, and you didn't stop him. Well, knee-jerk reactionary, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. He's, he's now <laughs> painting cats yeah. and dogs. He came and went, and he's happy, and you're and he's rich, and, and, and probably living a better yeah. lifestyle than we are. So. Yeah. Uh, Controversy building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what are we gonna do? We, I, think we, I think we're getting kind of down to it. Maybe we should play the final dice game. Uh... You guys could ask me random science questions to see. If but I already did. The professor. And you answered it, and so it's like How about I mental got health? no more. How about mental health news, Dan? Oh, yeah. mental health news. Well, okay. As you know, about three weeks ago, 
like we taped the mental health news hour. Oh yeah, I missed that. I kind of wanted to. I know, I know. I kind of want to do that. So can long. we just do it here on the program? I mean, can we just kind of pretend that I'm just doing this and that you're doing your mental health thing? I mean, is that? <laughs> oh, I can bring the sock puppets and. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know I if I want to do that, news, but a news bullet. You could. You guys could. You could just. The Tell the news. Thing. You could just say the news bulletin stuff. I mean, what was your news bulletins on there? Is it spoilers? Uh, well, he, the, one of the most interesting one, ones that I read that wasn't so mental healthy or mentally healthy related. The, well, it was, it was mentally related. healthy, okay, right? Okay, I mean, so hopefully it wasn't like insanity or something. No, no, it was mental health related. But yeah, or, but it was mentally healthy though, right? Well, I mean, that's well what they do uh, for, for when they do research is that they will have people with schizophrenia or bipolar uh, or whatnot. They will uh, have them lie down on this uh, apparatus and they will do an MRI or they'll do a CAT scan or they'll do a PET scan. They'll do these different scans. And uh, Hershey, uh, got like uh, something like 90 volunteers and they gave them they did a, a double blind study where uh, the person giving them the chocolate it was all about chocolate uh, didn't know which was the active ingredient and which wasn't so what they did is they did a uh, test and control and they did other other tests and control so uh, uh, as you know when you eat chocolate um, it gives you a little bit of boost. It raises your blood pressure slightly. Uh, it raises your heart rate slightly, but uh, it has uh, chemicals in it that make you more alert and you pay more attention. And it has caffeine, so it also has a stimulant, right? And so what they did is they did this test. They uh, Larger people got uh, more chocolate and Smaller people got less chocolate, but they did this high cocoa chocolate. <coughs> and the test was to see what would happen uh, when the person ate chocolate. So the person would lay down in the machine, they would start running the test, they would start observing, and the person would eat chocolate while they were there, and they would watch as it happened, as the person's blood pressure would go up a little bit. Oh. And as their heart rate would go up a little bit, and they would watch it in action as uh -huh. it happened. And then uh, what they did was they, that were, um, they added green tea extract to the chocolate. And green tea has compounds in it that uh, lower blood pressure and lower heart rate. And so what they did is they added this green tea extract to see if they could counter the the blood pressure and heart rate changes that happen from chocolate and it worked uh-huh and so the idea is that you eat chocolate with green tea extract in it and you'll get the clarity that you get from chocolate the focus but you also get the relaxy calming that you get from the green tea Ooh. so you'll be able to eat chocolate uh -huh. and you'll be more alert and you'll be all relaxing and maxing thanks freddie talking to your mic we came Charlotte was on the street and she came here Charlotte is real I, hey, hi everybody uh, hi. there's Carl's hand to everybody that didn't think I was real <laughs>